Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach, and here we talk about overlanding gear builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle. Today we are going to be talking about some rear electrical that I've been sort of scheming and planning up for a while now. If you've ever searched rear electrical setups in your Forerunner or Tacoma or just smaller SUV for off-roading in general, there's a lot of guys out there that will build pretty extensive systems, but they're all exposed to the cabin typically or they're in some sort of cabinet that takes up a lot of space and I wanted to design a system that would essentially tuck back in some sort of hidden space or very small space in the Forerunner so that it wouldn't take up a lot of extra room on my day-to-day -day. so when my vehicle is set up more for just daily driving around town it's not really a burden but then when I go on trips you know I have all that extra functionality and I don't really have to work around it when I add a bunch of gear to my vehicle. So I came up with this solution. It's maybe not perfect for everyone. It does require a little bit of DIY work on your part, uh, but I'm also talking with Blaze Off-Road and we're trying to come up with a solution that's more off the shelf ready for someone out there who wants to add very similar functionality to this, but doesn't really wanna lift a finger and just buy a kit that's ready to go and designed for this. So. We're kind of working on both, uh, so I just wanted to mention that because Blaze Off-Road is a huge supporter of me. They have provided the front uh, power switch kit that I have in the Forerunner right now. I'd heavily recommend you go check out that video. I'll link it up, where, up here somewhere. Uh, they also sell a ton of different uh, electrical materials that are really helpful for building out your rig. So if you're trying to do dual battery setups where you need like a BCDC bracket, I also have a dual battery video somewhere up here too. Um, if you're also trying to buy a set of, uh, you know, Diodynamics or Baja Designs lights of some kind and you don't have a wiring harness to get from your switch to your light, there's a good chance that Blaze Off-Road makes like a perfectly designed harness for that exact application. You can just buy that right off the shelf. A lot of times when you go to buy lighting accessories, there's gonna be a checkbox that says, hey, do you wanna add on a wiring harness? Really recommend you not do that because typically those wiring harnesses are just mass produced and sourced from some manufacturer. They're not custom made. Uh, there are a couple lighting companies out there. I think Diodynamics sells certain ones uh, where the company sells actually really nice wiring harnesses. But for most applications though, those harnesses are, they're subpar to borderline acceptable, whereas the Blaze Off-Road ones are incredible and race proven and just built to the nines. So I'm kind of rambling, but just to bring it up that if you're going to go and buy an extra wiring harness or you're gonna go buy extra wire to build your own harness, uh, you know, Maybe just consider ordering a custom, perfectly designed harness from Blaze Off-Road because he sources all the best materials and a lot of them I've looked for and they're hard to source without buying in bulk and they make incredible products over there. So just go check out Blaze Off-Road. Um, not to mention they have a rewards program so you get cash back when you purchase items there. So you may be able to get a harness, say, for free if you purchase a power switch or something like that. So. I also want to thank uh, Blaze Off-Road. They were willing to sponsor the power switch I used in this video. Garmin systems are super cool because you can run up to four and you can add them whenever you want. So I had my front power switch system for a while before I added this rear one. I'm kind of a crazy person when it comes to these modifications though. So if you're someone out there who maybe wants to get one front power switch and in a couple years add some rear lights and then get a rear power switch, you can wait that long and uh, add it later. So uh, they're very modular and easy to use. They speak really well with Apple products. So if you have an Apple CarPlay head unit or if you just have like an iPhone, um, but they also work with a lot of other mobile devices as well. And they have mobile apps where you can run everything from your phone. This particular application, I wanted just to have the flexibility of being able to get to the physical buttons. Uh, I think that a lot of people dream about liking the physical buttons, but don't use them probably as much as they would suspect. I have a couple things coming in the future where I'm planning to put lights on the inside of my Forerunner, and I'm also putting lights as scene lighting on my rack. And so because I'm adding those, I'm adding the interior lighting and I have the lights that are already wired up there, as well as adding likely a DC to DC charger from uh, Tinker Adventures video, if you've seen that one on 
fast charging his EcoFlow battery. I'm gonna add all those extra things as well to the switch and I just don't in this video. Um, but those sorts of things uh, I think could potentially be helpful for having a physical switch if your phone's not handy or something when you're at camp or you're sleeping inside your rig or whatever it is. So there's a little bit of background for this video, uh, but I hope you like it. Like I said, uh, kind of in the beginning of the video, I haven't seen any sort of video like this out there on YouTube. So if you like this video, consider sharing it amongst your friends or consider sharing it on your Facebook groups or wherever you like to post things. Uh, Cause that would help me get the word out on some of these cool ideas. And when the channel grows, it helps me be able to come up with cool ideas and, and actually follow through on them like this. So I appreciate all the support so far, but uh, let's jump right into the video. Let's start talking about this modification. Okay, so I'm starting to put in my Garmin power switch here and I'm trying to figure out a way in which I can actually get everything all oriented and I'm doing a bit of prototyping. So this right here is the rear power system module inverter thing for this rear spot. And when you turn on that switch next to your leg in the driver's seat, you can turn on this rear panel. This rear panel hooks in like this and then there's clips all around the sides and the bottom. I got this popped out. What I did was, is I used this as a template for a piece of wood and I screwed a piece of three quarter inch plywood in the spot of this and had it push all the way down. The harnesses have space underneath to be shoved basically to the floor. This is in a spot where I can screw it down and we've got three anchor points there, there, and right there. There's this cool system that Tinker's Adventures talks about in basically providing more power for charging at DC to DC. And I think I wanna put one of those systems in right here, which essentially garners this useless. Not to mention I have this power panel here from my dual battery that is made by Blue Seas, which has power anytime you want. You turn it on and you've got USB ports, you've got a DC port, it's great. So I'm feeling like this is just kind of a waste of time to keep and it would be a sweet spot to mount a Garmin. So what I've got here, so here's our Garmin switch. Let me see if I can kind of hold it here, but how awesome would it be to stick it right here and have the cables come down the sides and the bottom and go into kind of a little area behind here for routing your cables and everything. I think it'd be sweet. I think it should work and we can put a grounding bar back here and some other stuff. So that's what I'm doing. Just gotta spray paint some of this wood black so it blends in better and kind of get all of this sorted. But I like where this is going and it's just crazy how perfect this fits in this little gap. So I think that's what I'm gonna do and I think it's gonna turn out pretty sweet. All right, stay tuned. All right, so before I get too far in this project, I wanna just give a couple measurements. So this is five and three quarters wide and 10 inches long. This corner, which is this bottom corner here, I've kind of rounded a little bit and same with up here to fit this bracket. Then the vertical piece looks to be about five and three quarters tall by about six inches wide. And I've cut the bottom of this at a 30 degree angle so that when it sits on here, it matches the angle of the plastic. I then trace lines on the front and the back to figure out how far in I wanted this piece to be because I want my Garmin system to sit flush with the plastic here. I want it to be flush so that the wires can come in, hook in, and then route behind it. So that's kind of the thought. I'm gonna put a couple screws in here and just see if I can push this whole system in there and uh, it'll stay without having to like disassemble it just to put it in there. So that's the uh, next step here. Let's see how it goes. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect this tail light here and we're gonna use this harness that you can get from Diode Dynamics. It's a tap-in harness that gives you a trigger cable for your reverse and your tail lights turning on. So this is actually long enough that I'm gonna take off the end of this clip and then we're going to just route this cable and then use it for trigger wires on the Garmin. So plug that in here, route them and keep on getting stuff set up here. I took out this hook in here because it helps for routing the cables down along here 
and up into that space. All right, let's do it. So if we crawl underneath the truck here, you can see there's like a harness already ran up into the cab and we can borrow that spot in that grommet and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna route a cable down through that to these rear lights and I'll show you where that pops out. Now, if you remember those orange teeth, they are right there. So that's right by this back rear anchor point. And we're gonna use that to our advantage and route that cable then right to our Garmin for the rear lights. That should work great. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I was able to get my bracket in place here. Uh, there's the big grounding bar for all of the negatives of the lights. I've got it situated in there nicely. I think I'll be able to add lights uh, without having to remove it, but worst case scenario, I can remove the whole bracket when I put in new lights. I've ran the ground cable and the power cable, and these should tuck down in there nicely. I'll zip tie them down, but I really like how this looks. Right here is my harness for my roof rack lights. Got my DRL for the rear lights, and I've got a light here for my backup lights. Got two triggers, the ground cable, power cable. We should be basically good to go. And I love how easy access this is gonna be. All right, let's put it all together and uh, let's start testing out to see if these switches work. I just want to briefly note that there is a hole in the middle of this bracket for that extension to go down through to get to that third mounting point. And this may seem fairly optional, but there is zero play in this bracket because of that third hole. And I really like how solid it is. So it's something to consider. This is a 12 inch extension with a 10 millimeter socket on the end. All right, so I've got basically everything zip tied to where I want it to be. This tray will still sit in here nice and flush, which is exactly what I want. This Garmin is mounted up nice and as flush and clean as I can get it. And uh, yeah, everything works. That intermittent red button means that there's power getting delivered from my dual battery. So now what I can do is switch one if I press it. This turns on the white lights in the bumper, just like that. And then if I do switch two, this turns on the red DRL in the bumper and the white light for the license plate. So I still need to clean up everything, but these have two triggers, remember, from the diode harness. So when I turn on my low beams or when I put the vehicle in reverse, each of these switches will be triggered automatically. So that should be really slick. Man, I like how that turned out. Okay, so I've got my low beams on here. The red lights are on. And as you can see, I've got my red DRL slash license plate light that are on. If we click into this here, that'll turn it on and off. If we click edit, then edit, scroll down. You can see we have it triggering off of input two. So absolutely perfect. So awesome. Then if we go to turn off the low beams, they will automatically turn off. I'll show you that and they're off. All right, well, there we go. Like I said, this lid pops on, seems to fit perfect. Either the wood is in this piece of the plastic or it's just too low. Either way, everything seems to latch up just fine. Man, that really turned out awesome. And there's no wire inputs on the top of the, the system. So, you know, we've got a gap on the bottom and a gap on the sides. Routing wires to this is, is super easy. So before I close out the video, one thing I wanna mention that I didn't really show too much is there is a massive gauge uh, positive and ground cable that are ran back to this power switch. Right now the power switch has the positive or the hot wire leaving the power switch to any accessory and then they're grounded to the grounding bar and the grounding bar is connected to a very large ground wire that goes back to the battery. So 
If you have a dual battery setup like myself, I'm connecting this to my auxiliary battery so it doesn't really affect my starter battery at all. If you're going to be connecting this to your starter battery, you may have to run a longer wire being that your starter battery is on the driver's side of the vehicle and this switch system is on the passenger side. So one sort of just forewarning or design challenge that I would recommend is depending upon how you wanna connect this up to your battery, there's lots of different ways. Uh, most people would use a terminal fuse post mount because they're kind of the industry best. It's recommended by most off-road accessory manufacturers and a lot of these professional wiring companies to not use those circuit breaker ones. They're thermally based, which is just kind of a mess as far as protecting for overcurrent as well as placing this inside of your engine bay where there's a lot of heat. So typically it's just better to stay away from those and go with the, I think they're the MBRF uh, style. I think they're called an MBRF style fuse, uh, but they go on those fuse post terminal blocks that most people you know see everywhere. So I'd also recommend you check out the SDHQ billet battery terminals. Those are sold at Blaze Off Road. I have those on both of my batteries and they're really, really helpful for connecting multiple things to your batteries. And I guess last but not least, uh, just as another sort of friendly reminder, when you're running a certain type of distance and you wanna drive a certain amount of current, you need a certain gauge wire. There's lots of charts out there that help you to determine that. Um, and then it's always a good idea to make sure your wire has plenty of jacketing and protection around it. So if you're running it in certain areas, if you're zip tying it, if you're running it through any sort of metal, make sure there's grommets. Do all the sorts of safe things so that, you know, these wires are kept waterproof and protected so there's no way for them to get beat up or hurt. And so that they're specced to properly carry the amount of current you plan to run through them. So... Those are all just kind of friendly reminders and maybe some buzzwords and things to talk about so you can Google and design things uh, how your project would best be set up. So, all right, well, that's a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will have all of the products that I can think of that I used here linked down below. If you wanna check out the C4 rear bumper video as well, uh, I'll link that up here in the top somewhere. Um, one of the trickier parts about installing this bumper is uh, adding those lights in the bumper can be an easy or a hard thing depending upon how you wanna wire them up. I really wanted the fancier functionality of having them run when I had my high, or when I had my low beams on or tail lights on and also when I put it in reverse because I thought that'd be really sweet functionality to you know integrate with that bumper light, so. If uh, you are buying a bumper in the future, this also might be really helpful because it's not like you have to buy a C4 bumper. If you're buying uh, some other bumper out there like uh, made by a different manufacturer or you want to just mount these lights directly into the plastic bumper cover, I've seen people do that. Or maybe you want to add tabs to one of those two bumpers, you could do that too. Maybe you even have that little hitch mounted light, uh, the diode cells you might be able to wire that into this rather than the power port on your hitch. I don't know, there's a bunch of different opportunities here um, and I think they're cool. So uh, thank you so much for watching, for supporting the channel. It helps me be able to do sort of creative stuff like this and these sort of projects are really fun for me. So the more projects I can do like this, the better. But thank you so much, I appreciate it and I'll catch you all in the next video.